my Linda Winter. So I've been finishing up on my stitching for the kitchen class and I want to show some of the aprons. Before I do that though, I want to do a real quickie for those of you that don't know about the Get a Grip. You probably know about these guys here. These acrylics and the problem is they move. I love the idea that it's see-through, but it's still going to move on me. So Martelli came out with Get a Grip. This material on the back side, this is a 4x16 ruler. This guy grabs. No slipping, no kidding. So I'm going to show you how we get around the see-through part. I've got a tumbler shape, which you may or may not be familiar with. The problem is, you can see, I can't see underneath it. So we're going to use a fussy cut. So I choose what it is that I want to highlight. I'm looking and seeing what do I like. I see several things I might use, but I'm going to come over here. This is what I want. This doesn't have the get a grip, so I want to put some pressure on there, place the template inside. I'm going to pop the fabric that removes this and then I'll take my rotary cutter so my rotary cutter I'm going to cut along the edge now my glasses I've got glasses on my head not on my eyes so when I go to cut this next cut what I'm going to do is start on the side and go backwards and forwards just a little bit you'll see that I'm getting it on the edge that way I'm not taking a guess that maybe I'm hitting here or maybe I'm not on the edge so I start on the edge and I roll backwards and forwards so what this is going to allow me to do is fussy cut I get exactly what it is that I want to cut. So I've got my block there. So the Get a Grip material, we make all different sizes and shapes. I came out with my winter designs lines. I don't know, I've got probably 20 templates, so go watch my other videos. What I wanna talk about though is aprons. So a friend of mine, Judy, has got a granddaughter and she loves doing aprons for her. So this is a cute little apron. This guy here is done with my round dolls. I'm gonna pull this over. The round dolls are three templates. When I turn this over, you can see one, two, three. They're right now taped together, but when I take the tape off, you can see how they start to separate. If we look at this radius, this rounded edge here, it's a whole lot bigger than this rounded corner here. This, 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 that's the inside piece. There's four different radiuses, four more, four more. So I'm gonna put this away and grab these two over here, and then we'll take a look and see. When we look and see, this is probably the one that she used here. You can use any radius on here, whichever one it is that you like to do. So what we're going to do is grab some fabric. We'd square this off first, the size that you wanted, and then we're going to fold this in half. When we fold this in half, I want to make sure that everything is lined up accurately. And then I audition. Do I like this radius? Do I like this radius? Do I like this? See how that one's smaller than this one? I'm going to go back to this 4-0. And when we go to cut, I line this up on the edge, line this up on the edge, and when I cut, I get exactly the same thing. Now, the cool thing about the round-offs is, if I wanted to do two layers, right now I've got the front and back, basically the front and back, so I have four layers, so the two on the top, the two on the bottom, or the one on the top, the one on the bottom, left and right. But if I was going to be doing a placemat or a table runner or something like that, I can actually fold this way as, as well. Do you see how these aren't lined up? I get those all lined up first. And when I go to audition, again, we're gonna pretend they're lined up, but do you see how that fabric stays with this? So I don't need fabric under this part of the template, and I've got the largest template here. So when I go to cut, I get exactly what it is that I want to do. So my videos will show you, the round off videos will show you how to use that round off in a little bit more detail. But this little apron, make a matching apron. Do an ice cream social one day, and you can have this as the nice little kind of, um, Nice little apron for her to make. Now this one is one of my favorite aprons and I'm going to come around and show you on the front side because I want you to see and I would have worn pants today if I had remembered that I was going to be doing this. I want to show you one of my favorite aprons. Judy thought of this too. It just kills me that I didn't think of this at three in the morning. So my dad does wood turning. Wood turning where the chips get right inside here and then they go down his shirt. He needs a bigger apron. So I made a bunch of aprons for him in this style. What I love about this is that when your hands are tired or when you're a little girl, you don't wanna be doing the clasp back here. You don't wanna be tying a knot. You don't wanna be fooling with any kind of a um, clasp there. So she's made a casing. Do you see how when I pull up, this casing that's sewn down here or I pull down, that allows me to bring this up higher or lower. What I did for my dad was instead of using a ribbon like this, I used elastic. And I just did this for him this last week and I put a piece of elastic inside. I measured here how I wanted it to be and then this was elastic as well. I put it on him and on the back, I stitched the elastic to where he could pull it off his neck and off of his body without having to untie anything. So you can do that as well. If you've got somebody that isn't able to fool or doesn't wanna fool with anything like this, then it's easy to do. But this is simply a casing. 
So this one was done with the round offs, the left and the right, exactly the same. And again, this is a little girl size. I wouldn't wear this apron for me. And when we do the left and right, you can see how those line up perfectly. So that's done with the round offs. The other template that she used on this was for the pocket. This is a tumbler. The tumbler, you can see here's the tumbler shape upside down. We'll go this way. The cool thing about the tumbler is the tumbler tumbles when you piece blocks with this. This tumbler comes in a three and a half, a five, a seven and a half, and a 10. And they all have the get a grip. And there are two sizes, th three and a half and five, that have the fussy cut frame. So if you wanted to do a frog, a dog, a bear, a toad, a flower, perfectly in the center, she's got ribbons that she attached here, then you could do that with a fussy cut frame. So let me throw these over here, and then I'll show you another apron that Judy gave me just like two weeks ago. This is a bigger apron, and this is out of watermelon fabric. And you can see there's a curve here and a curve here. Those were done with the round offs. This you could do with the round offs or you could do with my circle. I've got a complete circle template that you can use here. And I think actually that's how she did do this because this is folded down. It looks like, yep, yeah, looks like she did a circle and then she just stitched this down. And probably this was a circle that was just cut off here. So this is another really cute apron that you can do too. What she ended up doing with this though is she took my baby bib template and she made pot holders. These pot holders here, they look like little flip-flops. Now she gave these to, I'm not sure who it was, but they thought these were really slippers and they put them on their feet. I probably stitched this down and stitched this down so you could probably even make a little pocket and then you could open up and grab from the microwave or grab out of the oven, something like that. You could even do a little pocket here and a little pocket here. But this was done with the uh, burp pad template or the baby bib template. So she cut this, you can see one side here like this and then use this to do, I think, I don't remember what she said for here, but this here, you can use any of the templates to do that curve. So that's another cute idea too. This is another apron that was done with the round offs and there's a bunch of rounded corners here. If, you're, if you were using a bowl of plate, a dish, good luck on the left side or the right side being exactly the same. I want, let's untie this. I want the left, right, the front, back to be exactly the same. So when we look at this apron, this curve here needs to be exactly the same on the front and on the back. I need this curve to be exactly the same as here. I need this curve to be the same here. I need this curve to be the same here. So all of those curves are done with the round offs. And this has ties, but again, you can do the elastics. You can do a casing with that as well. So the round offs are really great for that. Now this is a favorite shirt. Not a favorite shirt, but a favorite apron. I get requests on doing a class on this all the time. There are videos out there and there are written directions. I'm gonna tell you my method is a little bit different than what I recommend. When we look at this, this is simply a button down. So we're gonna take a look at a button down. Here's a button down. Maybe you go to your closet or you can go to any of the Goodwill stores. This one was $5.99 and I'm sure I didn't pay that because I wait for the color to be 50 or 75% off of that tag. But one thing that I want you to do when you look at these videos and the written directions out there on this is a little bit different than what they tell you to do. They'll tell you to cut at the seam. I'm going to tell you when you've got powdered sugar, when you've got confectioner sugar, what do you do? You do this. What I want you to do is have an apron that you can do this to. It's that butt part where we wipe off. So what I want you to do is on the back of the shirt, cut in half here, about up to here. And then that way I can decide how much I want to go around here. I don't want to cut this off, especially if you've got a smaller shirt. The larger the shirt, the better the apron is going to fit. But I want to give myself a good amount here to go around me on the back. Now this apron has all kinds of embellishments. There's beads, there's buttons, or, or buttons, and then there's a pocket here, there's a flange here, there's a binding along here. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You can simply just turn this over and stitch and turn that over again and do a top stitch on there. You don't have to add a pocket, you don't have to add the flounce, but it is kind of a nice thing to be able to do, to embellish. So that's a great class project. If you're interested in me coming and doing a class, Start looking at all your shirts, your husband's shirts. They're great for you to be able to do this with. Okay, so I do a Recycle It class. And in the Recycle It class, I show a lot of stuff you can do with blue jeans. So I want you to think about your blue jeans and making aprons out of those blue jeans. Here's one blue jean apron that I just think is really cool. So here's the apron. 
now this guy goes around here. I would change this up a little bit so it was a little bit higher to protect myself. When we look at this, this embroidery here, I've got an embroidery machine. I'm not gonna do that on the embroidery machine because that takes how many colors of thread and how much time to watch. And when I can go buy these pair of blue jeans at a Goodwill type store for $1.50 or $3, it's worth every penny for me uh, to do that. So this doesn't have a binding along here. It's just fabric that's been folded over. You can see here, it's more the size of binding, but wider on the front. I think that adds to it. This was not a pocket on the pair of blue jeans. This is a pocket that was cut from blue jeans, from somewhere else on the blue jeans. So we're gonna take a look at blue jeans. I like to go shopping during the change of season and look at the stuff that's got the yellow tags. This is from Walmart. And I wanna say that these were $3. Yep, $3. And these are a size, I don't see the size, but they're huge. Anyway, you see how big they are? That's a lot of real estate. So what I want you to think about doing is when you buy a pair of blue jeans like this, those are skinny legs. Even though this is a bigger pair of blue jeans, those skinny legs, they're not gonna necessarily work for this kind of apron. So what we wanna do is get blue jeans that have a wider leg. You can see this is wider. We're gonna rip up the seam, and I like to rip the outside seam because this inside seam, sometimes it'll have like a decorative stitch. You can see the do as I say, not as I do. There's a decorative stitch there. Um, I think I have another, no, I don't have a pair of blue jeans that shows that. But this guy here, this is gonna be basically a leg of a blue jean, a leg of a blue jean. So let's take a look. With this pair of blue jeans, I want you to think about one pair of blue jeans, I've got a leg, one apron. I've got another leg of another for another apron here. So I've got an apron, I've got an apron. Out of the same pair of blue jeans, I can get two aprons that are done from those legs. And if you think about how long those are, it's basically the crotch area where you're gonna be cutting and then adding the, um, the binding or the fabric that you want. And any embellishments if you want to do that. Here's another pair of blue jeans that gives a different look and this one has the pocket from the back side that's been cut off now this was not cut off or this was not sewn on here that's where you take that off from the back side I've got a tool that's the surgical seam ripper and they're right in front of Dylan Dylan I don't know if you can see those pink things there the pink seam rippers if you can grab one of course I don't have one that's the surgical seam ripper those were used in surgery so they've been used in surgery and then they've been sterilized. That surgical seam ripper is the best way to take off the back pocket. If you try to take off that back pocket, you're gonna rip in the underneath, in the fabric underneath that pocket. And that's the best way. That's okay, I, they'll get the idea. I'll show it in another video sometime. Thanks, Dylan. All right, so out of your blue jeans, we've still got some fabric left. I mentioned that we're gonna go to the crotch, basically for a leg and for a leg. Now we've still got the crotch. I just think that's a disgusting word, but we're gonna talk about the crotch part of the blue jeans. Here's an apron that's done out of that. The problem with doing an apron like this normally is we've gotta cut that crotch part of the blue jeans, and then when we cut it, do we flip the left side over on the right side or the right side over on the left side, and it's got that ugly piece. I just think that looks ugly. So instead, I'm gonna say, look at this guy here. This is my box bag template. If I turn it this way, you might be able to see, when I turn it to the back side, that piece right there is the top of my box bag. And that's stitched over so I don't have to worry about the left side or the right side going on top. What I love about this style is how the um, ruffles were done. I've got a ruffler foot, I've got a gathering foot, I've got a pleater, I've got a walking foot, I've got all those things. The problem is, who knows where they are, and then I gotta take the time to put it on. And I gotta remember how to put it on. So another way that you can do this um, ruffle that's on here is just cut a piece of fabric, and it doesn't have to be bias. This is gonna be straight of grain if you want to, or cross grain, but I want you to get that ugly white underwear elastic that you have in the drawer. I have some that's gotta be 20 years old. We're gonna take that with our piece of fabric, and we're gonna put that elastic, if you're doing right sides on, on top, then the elastic goes underneath, do wrong side on top, then the elastic goes on the top, and just hold a little bit of tension. A little bit of tension, and it starts to gather that elastic. And now I've got a ruffle, instead of having to use that ruffler foot. I think that's a really cool way to do that. And of course, we're gonna fold this over, and then top stitch, and fold this over again, and do a top stitch. Or you can do a decorative stitch. This has 
um, kind of a zigzag right on top. So here's a great apron as well. Um, when you watch my videos on the box bag template, you're gonna see from a pair of blue jeans, a leg, a leg, that's an apron, the crotch, and then we have a pocket, and we have a pocket. Those pockets allow me to do my box bags. I'm gonna grab my box bag just so you can see it. This is a box bag. This is the pocket on the back of the blue jeans, the pocket on the back of the blue jeans. Here's one, here's two. That box bag template, can you see how this is here? And that gives me my pocket. And then I used a different pair of blue jeans, same pair of blue jeans, different pair of blue jeans. And all four of those come together. So this guy here lets us use almost every single piece of a pair of blue jeans. So I think that's all my aprons. Thanks for watching. Hope you got some inspiration and send me some pictures of what you do. Go watch me on Facebook and uh, enter my contest. Thanks.